What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Hyundai Kona courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. And so the Kona itself isn't really that old of a car. It was first introduced in the 2018 model year and it quite honestly is still a solid pick. If you are out there right now and you were looking for an inexpensive all-wheel drive vehicle, you should definitely consider the Kona. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels available for the 2020 Kona. First one being the SE starting at $21,195. Then you have the SEL, which actually is the one we are in today. That one is going to start at $22,995. SEL Plus, which is a new trim level for the 2020 Kona. That one starts at $24,845. Limited will start at $26,995. And Ultimate starts at $28,845. And by the way, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive version. If you wanted to go the all wheel drive route, simply add $1,400 to any of those prices. But so then when it comes to the power, Power plant there are actually two different engine setups available for the Kona first one being the two liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder engine putting out 147 horsepower at 6200 rpm 132 pound-feet of torque available at 4500 rpm power is sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic giving you MPG numbers 27 in the city 33 on the highway for the front wheel drive and 25 city 30 highway for the all-wheel drive and then you have the other engine setup of course the more enjoyable one one being a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine. That one puts out 175 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque available at 1,500 RPM. Power again sent to front wheels or all wheels through a seven speed dual clutch transmission, giving you a zero to 60 coming in at 6.6 .6 seconds. That is crazy in a Kona. With MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 32 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 26 city, 29 highway for the all wheel drive. But then before we do any kind of accelerations, I did want to mention there is a drive mode button on the Kona just to the left of the shifter. That's going to give you two drive modes. There's normal, of course, which is what the Kona defaults to. However, there is also a sport driving mode. And so when we put it in that sport driving mode, the Kona will immediately downshift holding the RPMs at a a much higher level and it will also adjust throttle response and steering sensitivity to a certain degree as well and but so now having mentioned all of that i think it is time let's go ahead and do an acceleration test in the 2020 kona and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed <laughs> all right it is loud, not the fastest thing in the world though, but then again, we do have the naturally aspirated setup as opposed to the turbocharged setup. So it's not gonna be quite as fast as that one. And I got to say it could use a bit more power. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend the turbocharged setup on this one at least. But still, if you were just using this for city driving, you don't need to necessarily merge onto the highway. Not that you would probably have any issues, but still it is definitely with the naturally aspirated engine setup at least, it's not the quickest car in the world there. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel disc brakes that will come standard on the Kona for all trim levels. And so far in my short little driving stint today, I've had no issues with the braking feel. And Hyundai has traditionally been pretty good with the braking feel. I've never had any issues personally with any spongy brake pedals or anything like that. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit, the suspension is actually, this is one of the main things, one of my pet peeves with the Kona, the suspension is going to differ substantially if you go with the front wheel drive versus the all wheel drive setup for the Kona. And so let me explain here. Up front, you will get an independent McPherson strut front suspension, regardless of which setup that you go with. However, in the back, this is where the suspension greatly differs. In the back, you will get for the front wheel drive setup, a coupled torsion beam rear axle. However, if you went with the all wheel drive, you're gonna get an independent multi-link rear suspension, which is not only going to lead to better ride quality, but much better handling as well. Therefore, for what it's worth, in my opinion, the all wheel drive setup is certainly the route to go with the new Hyundai Kona if you value things like ride quality and handling. But nonetheless, either way, you will get front and rear gas pressurized shock absorbers. And so as far as the ride quality goes, I've had no issues with the ride quality. It is a little bit firmer than some of the other SUVs that I've driven, like for instance, the Santa Fe that I recently reviewed, but still it is definitely doable. So I suppose it is as expected for the Kona. When it comes to the steering feel, it is actually a noticeable difference between the 
sport and normal driving mode so if you did enjoy a little bit heavier of a weighted steering wheel go with the sport if not simply just leave it in the normal driving mode when it comes to cabin noise again it is as expected for the Kona no issues there and then touching on visibility is certainly not bad that second row headrests do protrude up and they kind of hinder visibility I suppose it could fold that second row down if you didn't have any rear passengers but they do kind of hinder visibility ever so slightly but having said that when it comes to forward visibility there is a head-up display available with the ultimate trim level so that's going to help you keep your eyes on the road a little better again we don't have that today but that is going to be there for you if you wanted it but enough with the driving dynamics you guys let's go ahead and make our way to the exterior and check out this new bi-colored 2020 hyundai kona and so starting up front you will find projector headlights with led daytime running lights and the interesting part about the Kona and a lot of the recent Hyundais is the daytime running lights are actually the top set of lighting and just below that is where you're going to find your actual headlights, your low beam and high beam headlights. So I always find that interesting. It's a cool little design element. I love the LED daytime running lights up top. They definitely look good, but LED headlights down below there, that is going to come with the limited and ultimate trim levels. And you will actually get the automatic feature for all trim levels in case you were curious. And since we actually do have the SEL today, I was going to mention just below all of that, you will find fog lights if you went with the limited or ultimate. And again, since we have the SEL, you are not going to find them on ours. But take a look in the middle there. You will find Hyundai's signature front grille. Always looks good. I know some people wondering just above that front grille if this is additional ventilation right there. That is not. It's actually just a black plastic there. So... No additional ventilation, but it is a kind of cool design cue though. I do like the design of that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. Roof rails up top. They will actually come standard on the SEL trim level and up. So <laughs> therefore that is why you were looking at them right now. Rear privacy glass is going to come with the SEL trim level and up once again. There is also a floating roof line near the back. A nice little design element there. Now I did want to mention somebody is going to ask this because we do have a different colored roof than the actual body of the vehicle. The way that works is certain colors, you will get a different color roof. I think there is a blue with a gray roof as well. But today, of course, we do have the red exterior with the black roof. But depending on the color setup that you go with, that is an option. It is available for you there. But also, you guys could probably see there is a crease just above the door handles there. That also looks very good in my opinion. Nice little design element there. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the side mirrors here. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard. Heated side mirrors are gonna come with the SEL trim level and up and you will get integrated turn signals you guys can see there. Also standard on the SEL trim level and up. And now zooming out a little bit, let's take a look at the wheel setup here. SE trim level is gonna give you 16 inch standard alloy wheels. SEL trim level and SEL plus is gonna give you 17 inch alloy wheels. And if you went with the limited or ultimate, you will find 18 inch alloy wheels. And now the only thing, perhaps the only thing, the only design element that I think could be improved upon for the Kona, maybe on the top trim levels at least, is that plastic cladding around the wheel wells, both in the front and in the back, as well as the side skirts. But if they made maybe a trim level that would turn that into a body color design element, definitely wouldn't mind that but having said that that may very well be my only constructive criticism for the Kona as far as design goes but now make our way to the back of course up top you will find a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that you are going to have a rear window wiper there just below that if you were looking for LED tail lights that is actually going to come with the limited and ultimate trim levels in case you were curious and they do have a nice sleek look to them and uh that's where you're going to find the turn signals, as you guys can clearly see. As far as the rear bumper goes, upper trim levels are going to get some silver accent trim on the bottom part of that, although the SEL will not. And just below all of that, there is a single exhaust outlet down there. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around back to open that rear lift gate there is a button on the key fob that is going to unlock it so that is simply what i use and once that is unlocked you can simply open it up there but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 19.2 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning you can fold those rear seats down bumping that up to 45.8 cubic feet 
Did would also mention in the cargo area there, there is some in-floor storage, that's always convenient, as well as some grocery hooks and a 12 volt power outlet. And that is all pretty standard these days, but that's always nice. But making our way up to the rear leg room, that comes in at 34.6 inches. So for reference, I am mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Those rear passengers are actually also gonna find a rear center armrest with cup holders. However, maybe a constructive criticism of the Kona, there is no rear ventilation. However, on the other hand, some will say the Kona is a crossover. It is small enough that you don't actually need it. So one would think the ventilation up front would easily travel to the back so those rear passengers would be just as comfortable. But did want to mention it because a lot of crossovers and SUVs, you will have rear ventilation to keep everybody comfortable. But other than that, the rear seats were pretty comfortable overall. But making your way to the front seats, cloth surfaces will come with the SE, SEL, and SEL Plus trim levels. Leather surfaces are going to come with the limited and ultimate trim levels. And with those two trim levels, actually, an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat will also come standard with power lumbar as well. And if you went with the SEL trim level, which is the one we have today, you will actually also find heated front seats, both driver and passenger, in three different stages. And those buttons are going to be located just to the left and the right of the shifter there. So that's going to be there for super cold days in Pennsylvania, of course. But then take a look up front at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping for all trims. It will come leather wrapped for the SEL trim level and up. As far as the bolsters go, they are quite comfortable, not too thick, but not too wimpy either. So it is pretty much as expected for the Kona. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side end. When you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to unlock the rear hatch there, but it is actually gonna be a push button start if you went with the SEL trim leveling up. So all I am simply gonna do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is actually located just by the driver's right knee there. But so then once started up, tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right, there is a small digital display front and center, giving you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature. And there's a ton of other things you can scroll through too. And to do that, there's actually steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. But it's also gonna give you things like your safety features. Also, when you need your next oil change, that's always handy. Trip A, trip B, and there is a digital speedometer, which is what I would personally leave it on. So that is all very well laid out up there but now taking a look at overall interior quality. Wireless phone charger is gonna come with the SEL Plus trim level and up. And really in my opinion, what I found doing my research here, the SEL Plus trim level, that is probably the main addition to that particular new trim level for 2020 is the wireless phone charger. So if you wanted that at the cheapest price possible, SEL Plus is where you wanna be. Home link controls are gonna come with the limited and ultimate trim levels, as well as a power sunroof for those two. If you wanted a power sunroof, however, with the SEL trim level, you can get it as an available option. But just in front of the shifter, there's actually a bunch of different hookups. You have two USB outlets, auxiliary port, 12 volt power outlet. Just above all of those hookups, there is a small cargo area. You almost would not even expect to be there, but it is, and that's pretty cool. That's that's gonna be there for you. Just behind that, there is an all wheel drive lock button just to the right of the shifter. I did wanna mention that because I have that on my Hyundai Santa Fe. I have used that plenty of times when it has snowed here in Pennsylvania. Definitely powered through the snow every single time, very nicely. So I would recommend that for when it starts snowing. If you went with the all wheel drive model of the Kona, that is just behind that, you'll find two cup holders. And just behind that, there is a center armrest for the driver and passenger. And there is a decent sized cubby area just underneath, of course, as well. But now let's make our way to the tech display. And this is one thing Hyundai always gets right. One of the easiest systems to use out of all the manufacturers I have used. This is seriously one of the easiest ones that I've come across. But Seven inch color touchscreen display will come standard with all trim levels, but the ultimate. The ultimate is actually gonna give you an eight inch color touchscreen display. And with that upgraded display, you will get factory navigation with that as well. However, I really don't think you need factory navigation system in this age anymore. Reason being, because with the seven inch color touchscreen display for every single trim level, you will find Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So if you don't have a smartphone, then you might need factory navigation system. But if you do have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Kona via USB cable. I was telling you about those USB outlets and you have a free navigation system that you don't have to pay for updates with through the manufacturer or the dealer. It is constantly updated. It 
it catches speed traps for you as well. It has done that for me plenty of times. That's definitely quite nice. Also will tell you the speed limit of any given road. So that is all standard through. I know my Android Auto that I use every single day. It's definitely nice. But also up there, you can adjust climate control. Of course, you can adjust your radio settings. And when it comes to the sound system on the Kona, six speakers is going to come standard with SE, SEL, and SEL+. Plus. If you went with a limited or touring, you're going to find an eight speaker infinity sound system. But since we have the SEL today, we do have the six speaker sound system. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, it's pretty much as expected for the Kona. It's not bad. It doesn't have a ton of bass. It's not going to be quite as good as the eight speaker infinity sound system, but it is honestly just enough for the Kona. So if you went with the six speaker sound system, it's definitely going to get the job done. If you're more into music and rocking out, go with the eight speaker infinity sound system. But so then last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention is when you do put the Kona in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks as well, as well as the tire pressure monitoring system that will also come standard. But another thing Hyundai does really well is standard safety features. They will include for every single trim level, lane keep assist, forward collision avoidance assist, and driver attention warning. The driver attention warning I remember first seeing on Mercedes Benz. It is now trickled down for every single trim level for the Hyundai Kona. That is pretty sweet. Anyways, SEL trim level then is going to add a blind spot monitoring system that is the little car's icon in the side mirror there. So that's going to let you know when you're on the highway if somebody is in your blind spot so you don't go turning into them. Also with that, rear cross traffic alert and lane change assist. Then lastly, the ultimate trim level is going to add a little bit more, including adaptive cruise control, parking distance warning, and pedestrian detection. And so that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold. Hold.